Hello, and welcome to part three of the eVPN series. Uh, I'm actually going to make another session, part four, which is going to have uh, a couple of more additions. But in this section, we're going to see MP, BGP, um, and that's pretty much it. So we're going to we're going to look at the, the theory behind MP, BGP and why we need it. And then we're going to review the previous configuration and just go ahead and configure it. So uh, let's uh, jump straight into it. Uh, first things first, so in, in theory, uh, we need to we need to cover a couple of things that that happens on the switch. So whenever um, a server or host sends a frame with a source MAC address, uh, in this particular case, let's say MAC address A, uh, and it arrives to the switch, uh, what happens next is is the switch has to put it in its MAC address table. It says, hey, this belongs to uh, uh, you know this VLAN. That's the MAC address and that's the port. Well, with MPBGP, what that will also do is it will trigger uh, an update into the BGP table. And then that BGP table is going to send an update to our route reflector, which then he's going to distribute it uh, to all the route reflector clients in, in case of route reflector setup, which everybody should use the route ref reflector setup in eVPN. And, and that's how that works. Uh, and this is what exactly it looks like in an in a MPBGP table. So you'll actually see it as, as a MAC address advertisement, uh, and it's in its own family. It's a L2 VPN eVPN family in BGP. Um, so let's let's look at our previous scenario. Uh, in previous scenario, again, we, we had the switches, we, we configured multicast, uh, multicast group specifically that was associated with a specific VLAN and VNI ID. Uh, we had the Anycast RP uh, that was configured and uh, and well, again, and everything was working, so everything was reachable. So you might ask me, well, why do we need the uh, MPBGP? Everything was great. Uh, <laughs> well, the the problem with that is, uh, uh, anytime you send unknown unicast or you 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 trying to send a, a frame. Uh, to a MAC address that is not in your MAC address table, you will treat it exactly uh, as if it was broadcast, for example. So any any time uh, your, your entry times out or something like that, you will just broadcast it everywhere and you'll wait for uh, for somebody to reply back to that um, to you, to your VNI ID, and as it arrives to your VNI ID, you will learn that MAC address just like you did in a traditional Ethernet fashion to where you learn it upon arrival, which is not exactly what we want to do with eVPN. We want to, it's one of the things we do want to fix with MPBGP. So what we're going to do is we're going to, we're going to trigger a, a BGP advertisement to do that. So let me clean up this uh, diagram a little bit and um, from the physical topology and just look, look at lo logical topology. So again, the XLAN will, will in fact have uh, still the broadcasting capability going to multicast group. Uh, but then anytime we learn that MAC address coming from the switch, uh, we're actually going to try to update every single switch in our topology uh, that is joined to that VNI, uh, you know, to that VLAN with that MAC address. So that way we have a control plane that is more intelligent and that automatically updates our our MAC address tables everywhere where they need to update. So how do we do that? We create uh, um, MPBGP peering, just like in any fashion. Again, the, the BGP configuration is outside of this lecture. It's a, it's a big undertaking on its own. So same disclaimer goes there. You know, when I said, hey, did you, did you have to learn multicast to run a VPN? And I said, yes, same goes for BGP. Uh, you do have to know BGP. You have to know the basics. You have to know the the BGP selection criteria, the local preference, uh, the the actual route reflector cluster. All of that again is inherited with it if you want to be efficient uh, with with your deployment. So let's look at our configuration. Um, so the the first thing I am going to do is I'm going to show you the current configuration again. This is the same config that we had before. Uh, we have no MAC address learned, so we're going to go ahead and generate uh, a ping to see if uh, if we're going to trigger that MAC address update, and a ping is successful. So uh, first thing I'm going to show you, actually, I know that that ping was going to uh, a unicast. It, it was a unicast. Um, it, there was no broadcast uh, happening for that ping because the MAC address was already resolved for that neighbor, but uh, I 
enabled a debug uh, IP and packet on the, on the spine here, and I can still see um, our our broadcastings being sent to the group. And the reason what for that was because uh, the MAC address was empty, um, as I just showed on Switch Four. And when I generated a unicast frame, it was going to that unknown unicast and, and in fact sent it to the multicast group, which got broadcasted. As you can see, he received it uh, on uh, on one port and then sent it to the other three ports or the other two ports. So again, it, it uses that broadcasting capability. So that's something that we want to stop with this MPGP, MPBGP behavior. Uh, so uh, now let me look at the MAC address now. Now it's learned. So if I were to send another one, obviously it's going to be sent directly to the to the NV peer, which is 6.6.6.6. .6 but that's not the point. The point is we don't want to rely on that behavior where it learns and then the MAC address upon um, upon reception of it. So let me go ahead and paste all the configuration for MPBGP now, and I'll do like before. I'll do a show run. Uh, and I'll go through each each command there and kind of try to quickly explain what it does. So I'm going to go ahead and, and um, apply it to all three switches there. I already configured the spine with MPBGP, so uh, so we don't have to do anything there. Uh, but uh, as it finishes, I'm going to do a show run and and show you exactly what uh, uh, what those commands are. So let's do show run in the overlay. Again, in that sense, we're going to see that it's uh, the only thing that we added here is the is this host reachability protocol BGP. So what that does is it turns off the MAC address learning behavior upon uh, upon the data plane reception, and it will only put in the MAC address in that MAC address table from the NV when it learns it via BGP. Um, so now let's look at the BGP configuration itself and uh, and uh, actually there is another command um, that uh, that I need to show you before you can uh, so this command right here and the overlay um, EVPN is the command that you need to actually enable uh, the address family L2VPN EVPN in BGP um, so and then let's look at the actual BGP configuration. So everything in here is pretty straightforward, just like any other BGP. You're configuring it as uh, as um, as IBGP in this particular case. You, you make sure you send community both for extended because it's going to use the, the the route targets just like MPLS does. Um, and then this section right here is the is the configuration. Again, it's very similar to how you configure VRFs with uh, with. Uh, uh, with MPLS is you specify the route distinguisher. Um, in this particular case, you have the outer functionality, outer generate one. And then same thing for the route target. Very nice. It will auto generate one. It will be unique. It will work. Um, so that's that's pretty much it uh, from the from the BGP. There is there is nothing fancy here. Obviously, the 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 uh, the spine side will will look exactly the same. So uh, now. Uh, let's uh, so let's go ahead and uh, and uh, look at the the actual um, uh, the BGP peer, uh, the peering the neighborship. So we do we have a neighbor. It's been up for 52 seconds now. We can look at BGP table. There is nothing in there right now. It's just because um, uh, the MAC addresses are not. I probably need to clear out all the MAC addresses and re-trigger them in the MAC address table because that's what triggers BGP uh, update into the into the BGP table. So let me go ahead and clear all the MAC addresses, and um, and it takes a while for BGP to actually uh, to to kick in. So uh, to begin with, I think we're gonna still send it to the multicast address family. Uh, for a little bit until B BGP kicks in. So let me see in the MAC addresses. I still not learned in here. Uh, let me try to ping one more time and uh, and see if it's in fact comes out. So uh, okay, so now it's failing. So we know that BGP is actually learning in the control plane, uh, and hopefully it'll come back up here in a second. Okay, and there it is. So now we can, well, can we can ping. We should be able to look at the MAC address table, and we can see the MAC address are learned. And the one big thing that I should point out here is uh, prior to us learning it via BGP control plane, 
uh, this showed up as dynamic when we learned it via the multicast group. Now with uh, with MPBGP, this is showing up as static entry. So uh, you know that's that's one way to keep in mind to how to differentiate them. Uh, it also obviously inherits all the all the same things from the static MAC address entries as as any other static MAC address entries, and you know that's one thing to. Uh, to keep in mind, but um, other than that, you know that's that's pretty much it. So we can look at the BGP table uh, again. That's all our MAC addresses uh, advertised there. We can look at the BGP table on our spine. That should look exactly the same. Um, so that's uh, that, that's great. You know, so we know that the whole topology works, and uh, and that's really quick and you know, on the fastest way that I can put it to show you MP BGP example. So uh, now that this is the third. Uh, video, so I'm actually going to make another video about in, in this series, but um, but I do have to uh, give you an infomercial. So uh, again, as you saw in in a couple of these uh, videos, there's IOFIT labels everywhere. So IOFIT is a professional services organization. Uh, we do just about anything. We we do fixed price project, manage services, infrastructure, architecture, design, training. Uh, but on top of all that, what's really nice is we only have tier three uh, personnel. So what that means is well, there is no junior people in here. Everybody at IOFIT has at least uh, two uh, expert level certifications. So if you if you look at my credentials, I have four CCIEs. Um, I'm on some other uh, certifications. So everybody on our team is uh, is on par with with that kind of a level of ex expertise. So, anyways, if you need any any you know any services or anything else don't uh, don't hesitate to hit us up iofit.com and uh, and just schedule a meeting anyways i hope you enjoyed it there will be in one more video for anycast gateway and um, an arp suppression uh, on top of the evpn series so stay tuned and until next time